I want to talk today about, um, about vision, that you, what your goals are in your head, in your heart, because without that, you will perish. Uh, a people, it says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. You are a people. You are a person. And this applies to you. This applies to you. And uh, so I'm, I'm, by the grace of God, uh, I was writing down scriptures, and I was kind of going in a different direction until we, um, this morning, as we're getting ready to come to church, it just started going in another direction here. And the direction is, is that you can't fulfill anything in your life unless you have a vision or a drive towards that. If you have a drive towards something, you have a vision. Without that vision, you have no direction. Without that vision, you have no direction. Without that vision, you have no direction in your life. And so Jesus talks to us and tells us, and Paul talks to us, the Bible talks to us, how we're, 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 we have the grace of God on our side. We have God on our side. Well, that's a vision, okay? You kind of visualize that. I am not alone. God is with me. And the more you understand that, the more you can walk by faith knowing that truth. But if you don't, you don't have that vision inside, you don't have that truth inside you, which causes you to have a vision. You don't have that truth inside you that causes you to have that vision or that vision inside you to cause that truth to come to pass. You perish. Amen. If you believe God is not on your side, if you truly believe that, that's a vision. Amen. It's a negative vision, but it is a vision. And it's your driver, amen? It drives your life. Your visions drive your life. You now have no vision, you have no drive, you're not going anywhere. And you do what? You perish because you're not going anywhere. And so God tells us little things like seek those things that are above and not those things that are below. What's he doing with you? What is God doing with you when he says, seek those things that are above and not below? What's he doing with you? He's trying to get you to have a vision for things above and uh, get rid of the things below. Amen? Yeah, now, don't set your affections on things above, but set your affections on things below. <laughs> Jeez, I just said that backwards. Set your, things, your affection on things above, but not on things below. Amen? So if you're, if you're the other way around, your vision is on things below and not on things above. And if you're things are above, you're going to seek God. Amen? Down here, you don't seek the Lord. You've got your things, your affections on things below. Where God is, says, don't, don't set your affections on those things. Set it on above. So all God's doing is putting a vision in your head. Putting a vision in your head. And how important is a vision? How important is a vision? Well, a vision is everything. That's your, like I said, that's your driver. Now, when I used to go to the gym and work out uh, 25 years ago, I noticed one thing that was in a gym. And they had some mirrors, but they had a lot of pictures of what you could be. Amen? Right? They had pictures in there of some were, some were women and some were guys, but they had pictures. And there wasn't a, a picture there with a person that was totally out of shape and because that would give you the wrong vision. So you'd say, what are they trying to do in the gym? Well, they already know, the world knows, is that you, you put things up that can be your goal. This is my goal. And so when you walk into a place like that, they know that you'll never amount to anything. You'll never get the job done. Let's put it that way. You'll never get in shape if we put the wrong picture up because you'll have the wrong vision. Amen. Amen. So everything in your life is about your vision in life and where you're going to go and what you want to do and what you want to acquire and obtain and this and that. And God says, let your vision, let your vision let your vision be on heavenly things. And if it's on heavenly things and doing God's heavenly work, he'll come into your earthly things and take care of them. Is that not true? Isn't that what it teaches? So set your affections on those things. So anyway, as, uh, as we were talking this morning and Susie went to the hairdresser, and I want you to see this, I, I've noticed something that 
uh, if I ever go to a place like that, I notice them, what do they have? These, they, got, uh, they might have one guy there with a, a swabby do, and it's like, oh, dude, man, really? And then, but they have women there with, with hairdos, right? And it's like, what are they saying? You could be that. Set in the chair and you can become that. What are they doing? They're putting a vision in your head. It's like, hey, look at this. Look at this. This can be for you. Amen? This can be you. And, and that's why they do it. That's why they don't have other pictures up when, in a hairstyling place. That's why they don't have a farm tractor there. You know, you walk in and you go, hey, that's a nice John Deere combine or a case. Case. That's a nice combine, but what's it doing? What's it doing in here? We want, we want, we, I got to get a vision of a hairdo. So there's this, there's this gal that's got this real cool hairdo, and you think, yes, that could be me. And they're going, you're right. Set in the chair. And so you sit there and you get, just get all ready for it because what, what do you got in your head? You got a vision that you're going to look like that picture on the wall. You got a vision that, that I think that's, this will look good on me. Don't they give you a book and you go through the book and you go, that would look good on me? Aren't they trying to, isn't that right? You don't go through a book and say, that's a nice vineyard. Wow, wow, what a vineyard, you know? You don't do that at all. So it's all about vision, isn't it? Now, I want, I, I wanna, um, want you to see something here. Everything in your life is about your drive and your vision or your vision which creates you to be driven in a certain direction. Amen? Your vision. What's your vision? What's your, well, I don't really have a vision. I just live from day to day. God's got to give you a vision. God's got to give you a vision. He's got to impress in you and he's got to put it in you. Whether he gives you a dream, whether he just sets it in your heart, it's got to be there. The vision's got to be there. Because if you don't have vision, if you can't see yourself a certain way, you'll never be that. If you can't see yourself as a holy person, you'll never be a holy person. If you see yourself doing bad things, if you see yourself being a not a good person, whatever your vision is, that's what you're going to do. Whatever you allow in your head, that's what you're going to do. Amen? So your, your mindset has to be this. Whatever you want to be, that's what your mindset has to be, and you've got to clear it with God, but God's got to put that vision in your head. And then you'll be excellent in it. We've seen people do the, the craziest things with such handicap, and, and um, this, uh, what's her name, Johnny Erickson. She, several decades ago, she was a young gal, she dove into water, it was shallow, she crushed her vertebrae, became paralyzed, but she paints today with a brush in her mouth. Isn't that amazing? How could she do that? Because she could see herself doing it and she just kept at it until she could do it. And now she paints a picture. Now she encourages other people to have vision to accomplish those things that are necessary. Isn't that just you seeing yourself overcoming? What if, what if we, what if we uh, taught here that you, you're defeated and you can't overcome? You'll always be uh, on the downswing of things. Isn't, isn't, when we say God can prosper you, are, are we not just trying to put a vision in your head that I will be pros prosperous in this area or that area or my marriage can be prosperous? that I can, I can overcome in this direction, direction or that, that area of my life, that I am un, more than a conqueror, but I am an overcomer. Isn't that just putting a vision in your head that you see yourself climbing on top and not sliding down? Isn't that what it's all about? So isn't the vision everything that's in your head? Isn't that everything that actually drives you into perfection, into be even being a, a, a going the other way? Isn't that what it's all about? Isn't that what we need to straighten out? If you see yourself as excellent at, at your job and that I can do this, I could do that, are you not going to be excellent at your job? But if you see yourself as I don't care, I don't care what the boss thinks, I don't care about this, I don't care about that, isn't it going to go down? 
aren't you going to, isn't going to pull you down? But if you have the other vision in your head of, I can be excellent, I can, I can do this. Some things are really hard, but that's why God has put speakers before us and people that have overcome great trials in their life. Like I mentioned, Johnny Erickson, a great trial. She has bed sores that reach down to her bones, but yet she's still on stage. She's still encouraging people. She's still there. Everybody in our life, we are encouraged by this one and that one because it's not easy to obtain something worth going for easy things are not appreciated. If God forgives you of, of, your, of a, a few little sins, he says you won't love him very much at all. But he says, look at this woman, for her sins are great, and she is forgiven. And she washes my feet with her tears and dries it with her hair. Oh, how great her love is. See, she could see, what could she see? All my sins in my life, and this man, through him, I am forgiven. Can't she see herself forgiven? Isn't that what brought the tears? Isn't that what caused her to, to perform in the way she did? Drying his feet with her hair, that's all she had. But that's what she did and her love was great. Isn't it all about what God did for her? Wasn't it her, her view of the whole situation? But the problem with the Pharisees is that they had pride. And their pride hindered their vision. And it hindered it so bad that they couldn't see the, the Savior. They couldn't see the gift of God that was right before their eyes. So pride distorts, doesn't it? Isn't that what it does? It steals your vision. It distorts. Pride goes before what? The fall. Because pride causes you to fall. It causes you to have the wrong vision. I'll be great. I'm something. I don't need anybody else. And the thing is, you're headed for the fall. It distorts reality. Pride keeps us into a mindset, I don't need to press forward for the gold. I'm fine. We're never fine. I press towards the mark of the high calling. What is that? Did that sound like I'm fine? Is that why Paul said it? Paul says, I quit pressing towards the mark because I have arrived. No. No. For he had a goal, he had a vision, and he knew it was up ahead and that he'd have to press towards it his whole life. Little by little, step by step. But pride says, I don't need to do, I don't need to press forward. Pride says, I'm fine just the way I am. But the vision says, I must keep pressing forward. Pride, if it says I'm fine, keeps us in a place of complacency. We're complacent. And we really never acquire the gold that we are to have. Along the way, put a little gold in. God does. You got some in your pocket. Little gold, accomplishments, and encourage you to keep going. Vision is the problem. Vision is the problem. Vision is the thing that we need. That's the winning card. Amen. It can be, you can, your vision can be wrong. It can be headed for something that is the wrong vision. To accomplish something in your life, you got to see yourself just pressing towards the mark. And we know that if you're going to change things in your life, it's going to be tough. So what, what, do you, what do you need a class on? This is not going to be easy. You've got you to know that it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy to do anything. This is going to be tough. Isn't that what God, isn't that what God, isn't that what uh, uh, Patton did to his soldiers? Isn't that the pep talk he gave them before they went against the Germans? Isn't that what he did? He gave them a pep talk and said, this is not going to be easy, but this is what we're going to do. 
we're going to take them down. Isn't that what he said? We're going to take communism down. We're going to take this, this German thing down. As they, they knew they were killing the Jews. They knew they were slaughtering the Jews. They knew they were up to no good, and it was totally wicked. And what was the pep talk? This is not going to be good. He, he says, you just be ready. He says, when you're talking to your buddy, and a moment later you put your hand over and you put it in a pile of goo, and that's his face, he says, that's what you're up against, and that's what you're going to have to press through, but you've got to keep going. Amen? He told them the ins and outs, and how many know that he took, he took land that they thought it was impossible to take? That's why he was a great general, and that's why even the, the president, Eisenhower, feared him. Because he was a man that had vision and they moved. And he moved his men across the land and he took city by city by city. And when he got done with that, he said, we need to take the Russians out too. Oh, 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 oh. did this man not have vision? He had vision. And it just didn't stop with winning the war. We need to make another one and take that one out too. See how the vision was? And they got him out of there. He died with a weird accident. I think they said, this man has too much vision. He'll end up in the White House. And God only knows where that'll go. I don't know that for a fact. But it's sure strange that he, he would shoot with his ivory pistols at a fighter plane and it just shot down past him and he turned around shooting at him but he gets killed by a donkey cart. <laughs> Breaks his neck. It's amazing, isn't it? Well, that wouldn't have happened if God wanted him to go fight those Russians too. But nevertheless, the man had vision and you couldn't stop him. He had vision. Oh, blood and guts, they called him. That's what the soldiers did. Oh, blood and guts. But he was a driver because he had vision. And he, he drove within himself. Amen? Those things that you see in your life that are very, very hard to do, if you have the right vision, you have the vision, you can accomplish that if God be with you. And I'll tell you what, God's with you more than what you think. God's with you a whole lot more than what you think. And this is where we slumber because our vision will think, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that what Paul said? I can do all things. Amen. What did he say? I, can't, I can only do some things. Or I can do all things through Christ. Didn't he see himself doing all things? He must have. Or he couldn't have said that. Or he wouldn't have said that. He wouldn't have wrote it down, would he? He says, I can do all things. And he said, I would not have you ignorant. O flock of God, I would not have you ignorant. Oh, church of God, that there are spiritual gifts. You got to understand this. You got to see yourself doing this. No, Margie sees herself. This one sees herself. Susie has dreams. She knows she can. This one does this. This one does that. Bill preaches. Jane Abbey sing. We got prayer warriors here on Tuesday and Thursday night. Why? Because they're prayer warriors. They're prayers. They're petitioners to God. They're beggars before the Lord. Why? Because they know that God hears their prayers. They know that. Why do you do what you do? Because you believe in it. Amen? And you can accomplish that. I'm saying today that there are areas in our lives that we need to encourage ourselves and say, I need a vision, God, in this area to overcome. I can don't tell me I can't. Amen? I can do this. Amen? Isn't that what it's all about? I can be the best at what I do. What, did, what would God say to you? Be mediocre. Don't be the best in what I have you to do. Or when God says, no, be the best in what I have you to do. Whatever that may be. Be spontaneous. Be instant. Be ready. In season, out of season. Oh, I can't when times are tough. I can't accomplish it because I'm going through a tough time. Wait a minute. What part of that is being instant, ready? In season, when things are tough, when things are not tough, you're just there. Amen? Amen? Isn't that a kind of a, an understanding or a vision in your head that I am more than a conqueror? 
I am more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. How do you vision yourself? Less than a conqueror or being conquered? Do you see yourself as being conquered? Now listen, we have that in our lives, that go on in our lives. I see myself as just dying in the muck in this whole thing. Change it. Change it. Say, God, I need a different vision in this thing. I need a different vision in this thing. I got to move out. You know how some people hold you back? Now I got to move out. I got to move away from that. Well, they just hang on me. They just hang on me and they just pull me back into the mud. See yourself as being free and follow that. See yourself as moving out and say, I need a plan to move one step at a time. I need a plan. I need a plan. God, give me the plan so I can have the vision accomplished. Amen? Whatever that is. So, there are so many of us that, uh, let's just say it like this. I say it to myself. Just because I'm up here and you say, hey, you're kind of skinny in s- some areas, it isn't that I don't eat Twinkies and Ho-Hos. And I really like those chocolate hostess cupcakes. In fact, I was so uh, disappointed and actually came disoriented when hostess went out of, it's like I didn't know where it was. (laughs) I don't even know what aisle to go down now to really find it. Well, praise the Lord. Somebody else bought them out, brought them into place. But you know what? I need to really change that. Susie's trying to help me in that area. But you're, sometimes we're so motivated by what we fix our, our, our eyes on. And, and sometimes if we just remove that thing out of our life. Now I'm going to tell you what goes on. Uh, in my truck, as I get to that certain time a day, I think, all right, it's time to eat. And I go to grab my sandwich and I see two Hostess cupcakes sitting right there as I flip the lid. They're staring at me like two eyeballs. <laughs> eat me (laughs) it's like yes I want to but you know if I want to really you know get it together and there are certain areas in our lives certain areas in our lives some things are really hindering us that is really not good for me because I can tell when I eat them that it just really brings me down and about a half hour later I need I really need a nap (laughs) And I've noticed when I don't eat them that I have strength and I feel better and I'm more alert. But it's easy to give in. It's easy to give in sometimes to the things that really hinder you. Amen. So I have to be strong in the morning. And I want to tell you, it's, and I haven't accomplished that, but I do know that the hostess cupcakes are up there in the pantry and when I'm fixing my lunch they just stare at me and they go lunchbox hello (laughs) and I do and I pull two out and I says who knows I might not eat them today but with them there I will and I do so you really have to set the stage sometimes you really do have to and Susie will say, I, I gave you carrots, I gave you cucumbers, and I gave you some cherry tomatoes, and you really need to eat that stuff. And there's been days I come home, and a few, few cherry tomatoes, but most, for the most part, Twinkie, Hostess cupcakes are gone. I really like them better than the Twinkies, if you want to buy me anything. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll come home, she says, you didn't eat your fruit and your vegetables. And I go, I know. And I'll say, where's that Metamucil at? You know, (laughs) she says, you (laughs) need to change your ways. Amen. So it's vision, which brings direction. And just the lack of not understanding and being kind of ignorant of the fact that you can be more than what you are since I never saw myself ever accomplish in this and this and this we really do you can do all things through Christ you just lack the vision and without the vision you have no drive you don't, you're not going in a certain direction 
If you look at those pictures and you say, I'm going to be that person and I can be that person, then you will be that person if God be with you. If God be with you. Amen? And it isn't easy. It's going to come with a lot of sweat. Amen? It's going to be hard. But if you see yourself pressing through, you know what? With that vision, it seems like you sail right through. Amen? It seems like you sail right through. If you see the end result, that's your vision. If you're waxing a car, whatever you're doing, you don't think about, <laughs> you know, every inch. Oh, there I am. That door is going to take 20 minutes. No, you view the whole thing as a whole. And it seems like you go right through and you're not thinking about all the hard work that it is. You're viewing the outcome of the whole thing. Amen? Your car will be shiny. Your wheels will be there. And you, and you know what I mean? Am I talking to anybody there? I know I talk to Steve because he does that. All right? So your vision is, is that it's the end result. Isn't that what it is with, like I said, the hairdo, with the bodybuilding or anything like that? I'm going to lose weight. What's the end result? The end result will be this. Well, you keep, that's what, pre, that what, that's what motivates you. I need to do this in life. I need to do that in life. <clears throat> Press towards it. If God clears it, go for it. Amen? If God clears you, go for it, and he'll be with you, and I can do all things through Christ. So I want you to see. I just want you to see that everything in the Bible is, is giving you a vision of what you can be, what you, God wants you to be, that you'd be a fruit bearer, that you'd be a tree with fruit on it. Amen? Isn't that what it's all about, that you see yourself doing things, being things, because without that vision, you're not going to be anything. So it's all a vision. It's all a vision. Is it not? Peter, one day you're going to go to the cross. You're going to go to a place that you won't want to go. But you will go, Peter. And Peter already knew that he was going to go to that place, and that's how he was going to glorify God. What was he going to do? He was going to stay the course, and he knew it was coming, and he was going to press through, and that's where he was going to end it all. Sometimes you just need that to be told so you have a vision to you. And that's what God does. He tells you. And only through Jesus Christ can you have the vision to be victorious. Amen? You can't do anything without God. You know, last week I, I talked about God is your everything. He's your all in all. He's your everything. He's your all in all. You can't have anything without God. You can't get anything without God. Because He's like a jealous husband over you. You're not going to get something from somewhere else that God says, hey, 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 hey. Anything that is not of faith is sin. And this was all about you. And I wasn't in it. So he says, well, I'll tell you how to do this thing. So God puts us little, little things in our heart and we see ourselves doing certain things. I hope today that I encourage you if you want to accomplish something in your life, you got to have a goal that has a vision in it, and goals usually do. This is what I want to be. This is what I want to accomplish. And if God okays it, you, you, can, you can get it. You can get it. You can do it. But you got to want to. You say, well, I got some, I got some problems. I already know that I should, I should, in the wintertime, do aerobics of some sort, get my heart rate up. I already know that. You know what I want to do? Nothing. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. Why? Because it's hard. But, I, but if I had a real desire, you know what? I'd figure out a way to get it done. I'd put ice on my hip. It seems like it wants to give me problems, and I get it ready for the day. In fact, I start getting ready the night before. Say, so, yeah, I'm going to have to get my heart rate up. I want to live about a year longer than what maybe I, whatever. And so I'd make preparation for that. So uh, try to remember this. Try to remember this. It's all, that's what it's all about. 
God gives his people vision that your sons and your daughters stand at the gates of Jerusalem. They'll be there in control of things. Victorious. Say, yeah, that's right. What son would you have that you would not teach him a vision? And say, this is what you need to accomplish. This is, this is where you're at. Really, Dad? And say, yeah, son, this is your call. You need to get after it. And this is what you can become. Amen? Isn't that what it's all about? If we, would, as parents, will not do that, our sons and daughters will be losers. They'll lose because they're called to have a vision and visions in things. Amen? I want to get married. I want to have kids. Well, if you don't believe that, you're never going to get married. You're never going to have kids. I want to have family around me. You know, when I, was, when, I was, uh, when I was growing up, between Susie and I, we got nine kids. And I thought to myself, I can live my life alone and just be one of those guys or, and die in a nursing home by myself. And I thought of the end result, and then I thought, or oh, I can have a family and have family surrounding me all the days, the rest of the days of my life. And I chose that. Amen? Amen? Isn't that kind of like making a decision to go in a certain direction? Right? So that's what we've we got to do. Praise the Lord. And you will have, God will give you those heart's desires. It works both ways. God put desires in your heart, and then God gives you a vision. You'd be surprised what good God wants for you. A whole lot more than what you ever think. A whole lot more. When you get to heaven, you're going to say to God, in depth, in, and I truly believe this, you mean I could have done that? And God says, oh, yeah. You could have. Remember when I put it on your heart? And you go, oh, yeah. And he says, you just blew it off. And I put it on your heart. So he says, I went on. But you could have done this that I had put on your heart. It's like, wow. You just lost the vision, that's all. Which was your driver. Amen. Hallelujah. We would never have freedom if we wouldn't have had the revolution. I think this. I think today the United States of America, the people are losing their vision of freedom. And they're watching themselves go into bondage. And God's allowing it. He's allowing it. Because there's such wrong in the United States of America. But then I must be reminded about Sodom and Gomorrah. And God says, if I would just find a few righteous, he says, I'll not destroy her. The problem was is that he couldn't find 10. He couldn't find anybody other than Lot and his family, and God knows how to rescue the righteous. Amen? If we didn't have the men that fought in World War II, we would have been overcome by the Japanese. You know why? That they were afraid of us because they knew that we had guns in the United States, a regular man did. And they were afraid to come because they know that they would get shot by the regular man. A lot of people don't know that. There's a lot of things that go on. Why? Because we in the United States of America, we can have a vision. I think the vision is being taken away from us. Keep the vision of freedom. Keep your vision of freedom. If you lose that vision and you have to ever ever stand up for your country and die for your country as a person, you won't. See how important it is to keep this thing clear. Keep the vision. And there's a lot of different visions that you have to have in your life. You become enslaved if you think like a slave. Amen? Wasn't that Israel's problem? 
they had to learn that they weren't slaves anymore and it took them 40 years. Don't become a slave. Be free.